wants to block it uh, with his knee like this, right? Like knee shape. I want to set up the situation that I can smash his legs, right? So here. Then most of the time when he plays knee shield, uh, he needs to point at that direction to use his shin. Right? If he just uses his knee cap like this, it's not a big problem. So here, then his knee is not too wide or not too narrow. It's like I point at my left shoulder. This kind of situation. Right? Now it's not easy to pull his legs. So first I cut his knee. After like this, I move my body to the side to put my belly in front of his shin. Here, you see this. Right? After I break this, I smash down his left thigh. Look how I glide his left thigh here, right? Then I can connect his knees, right? That means his legs are smashed. So here, then I want to reinforce the flank, right? I'm going to slide my right hand behind his hamstring. That comes through here. I like to put my fist on the floor instead of grabbing my tail here, right? As long as I put my fist on the floor like this, I can pin his leg, right? So here, right? I can smash it up, right? If I stay here, I have only to chance to play lasso or arm drop like this. That's what I want to avoid. So it's very important that I use my belly against his shin, not with my chest. Otherwise, I cannot make the maximum leverage. So here, look. I completely move my body to the other side. Then I come back to the original position. Then I can smash his thighs here, right? I saw his leg like this. So this is how I smash his lower body. Next step, I want to make anchor, right? So here's a good position for me, but he can still find a space to escape. So from here, he might have to push me away, or he may even lean back to create some space. Then he can find a space to pose that out like this. So that's why I need to stay the same distance. So here, right? I look for the card on his right side, right? With my thumb inside. Here. Not on this side though. So here. Then I make right with my arms. So one is on his thighs, one is on his card. Here. Then I want to make sure that I keep it tight. Then from this position, right, I just want to slide out to pass his leg. So here, I turn my hips, you see? So as I do so, I can slightly make his leg weak, right? Even though I drop my leg like this, see? Look, right? I can change the angle. So from this position, what I'm going to do is take a walk around him. Here, you see? I take a walk, right? During the time I do, I pin his leg down with my right arm, which is very important. After I slide out, I keep the same angle, right? As if I drive my shoulder on his belly, then I can make him fall. Look. After I put both of his shoulders on the ground, I can let his go to hug his hips like this. Then I stay at the position. Pop his knee, I put my belly on his chin. Smash his leg down, then I saw his legs. Right? I make the color. I want to talk about posture in this situation, right? Even though I drive my leg forward, I'm not gonna bring my head down like this. It seems like a lot of pressure on him, but no pressure on him, right? He can even stretch me out or uh, he can even escape from this position. So this time, you see, I keep my chest tight like this. Almost like driving my chest on his belly. Is raising my head up. I'm not gonna bring my head down like this. Like keeping a posture, even though you're in four. It's pretty difficult for him to escape. See? I can directly put my weight on him as long as keep my back straight. So here. And then I turn my hips. I take a walk to the outside. After I take a walk to the other side, I wanna connect my hips on his hips. That's how I make him flat. Look how I drive my hips and shoulders on him. Look. Now I put both of his shoulders on the ground, right? And then I pull my arm out to have his hips. Then I stay in that position.
possible that he doesn't want me to the ground pass. That's why, even though I try to make the distance by doing a sprawl, he keeps on catching my right leg with his right leg. Right? So in this case, it's not easy for me to pick it up on the ground level. So I want to make more leverage and distance by changing the level. Right? So here's the position. It's pretty difficult for me to make the distance, right? If he keeps my leg like this. So now, right, I drive my shoulder on his thigh. Then I want to get on my tiptoes, right? I take off my knees here. Of course, he's still catching my leg like this, you see? But as I change the level, I can slowly find a space. I want to turn my knee, right? My knee uh, point at his shin direction, so here. You see? Then from now, I want to slide up. As if I did a shin cut. So here. I want to cut his shin with my knee. Then I slide out. So after I slide out, this is going to be the same as the last technique, right? So first I got to make him flat, right? Before I control his upper body, right? I drive my hips onto his head, right? This. Once I make him flat, I raise the sony head. Then I set that position. So sometimes you cannot figure out. In this case, right? You can make a difference by changing the level. So this is a technique. So he, he does a good job. Right? He's pulling my legs so tight. So in this case, you see, I keep him on the ground with my shoulder pressure. And then I raise my hips up, like making a triple pace. Good. Even though he keeps it, it's getting harder for him. Right? And then after like this, I turn my knee. Look. I can clear it out. Right? And then I take a walk to the side. Then I stay in that position. I saw his legs, make the cut with the same angle, distance. Here, either like the first one or the second one, and slide it up. And from this position, this is a battle, right? I want to keep him on the ground, and then he wants to escape, right? Even though I drive my way on him, I'm not ready to make him run. He comes up to me like this, wants to stay sideways, right? Even though I drive my way, so here. You see? As long as he stays sideways, I cannot get side control, right? But you see, in this situation, so as he stays on the side, you can find the space right, above his leg, to step, step forward. So I want to set up a kind of smash pass position. So after you slide up, right? He does a good job, like uh, using shin or running. Then he does allow me to. Right? So in this case, I raise my hips up, and then I step it over, like this. See? Smash pass position, right? Then sometimes he may make a hook behind my knee, like this. So in this case, right? You can do it really easy if you open your right knee. So here, as we put your left knee on the mat, right? You can change the angle. Usually, he wants to make the hook behind my knee. Then it's pretty strong, right? So that's fine. Look. As I put my left knee on the mat, he cannot keep the hook behind my knee. Here. And then I rotate, right? So before I go to the other side, I want to completely keep him on this side, right? I'm not going like this. Otherwise, he might be able to chase me. See? This. Here, right? He makes hook behind my knee. So before I go to the other side, I want to push his leg. Like this is more like her stretching block. Here, right? Then I keep my arms tight. Then I take a walk to the side. Look. Especially as I grab his belt like this, it's not easy for him to turn to the side. So similar to the leg track. See? Here, this type of grip. And then I have a lot of options, right? If I want to stay at the side control, I look for the cross face. If I want the back take, I catch it to go to the turtle. Yeah. I can do the back take. 